Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us for yet another amazing Black History Month Facebook Live series. I am Stephanie Broughton. I'm the moderator for the Dallas ISD session, and we have another amazing guest with us this afternoon. We have the CFO of Dallas ISD with us today, Dr. Tamika Alfred stevens But before we bring her out, we want to show you guys a Dallas ISD video on Black History Month. of Black people throughout history and is a very important event for all of America to celebrate. Today, Black History Month is celebrated not only in the United States, but around the globe by five different countries. Black History Month is celebrated to honor Black contributions to the arts, culture, science, sports, and history. It is also a time to reflect on the progress the richness and the diversity of African-American achievements. Please join us as we recognize and celebrate the contributions of Black Americans in our nation, our state, and our local communities. We encourage everyone to visit our Black History Month district-wide website for scheduled events. Join us as we celebrate this year's theme, Black Resilience. Let's celebrate the vital role that African Americans have played in the development and progress of America throughout our history. Thank you for tuning in to that video and please feel free to take a look on the Dallas ISD website for all of our Black History Month events and anything that we have scheduled with the district regarding Black History Month. Now, let's go ahead and get right back into it. I want to introduce you guys to Dr. Tamika Alfred Stevens. She is the Chief Financial Officer for Dallas ISD. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. How are you this afternoon? I am doing just fine. Thank you for having me. It's been a good day. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, it has. We You've had some amazing sessions today, and I've been looking forward to your session. You know, I knew we were going to have a great session. I'm going to tell you how I knew that. So when I sent the invitation out to ask you to do this, mm -hmm. you called me. <laughs> and when you called me, I said, we are going to have an amazing session. <laughs> so I just want to thank you so much for your willingness to participate in this. And, and I was enthused in encouraged because of your enthusiasm <laughs> like yes absolutely so I just want to thank you so much for that and when we were talking you said there were three things that were extremely important to you and I'm going to mention the first one and okay. then I'll let you mention the other two as we go through the sure so the first thing you said is your family. Oh, yes. Not just like your family, but your husband and your son. So I definitely want to highlight them. <laughs> talk about your family. Yes. Um, oh, my goodness. Um, you know, there is so much to unpack there. And I know we don't have all day <laughs> to have the, <laughs> this conversation, but um, I think Aside from my dad and my brother, um, these are two of the most important people, men um, mm -hmm. in my life. Um, my husband, um, Anthony Stevens is there and our son, um, Paul Anthony Stevens. Um, they were born on the same day, April 11th. And so uh, we had named my son Anthony Jordan since the day he was conceived pretty much. And with him coming on his dad's birthday, um, my husband was like, no, he has to have my whole name. And I'm like, hey, I don't want, I want him to have his own name. So needless to say, we landed on Paul Anthony, which is his first name, which is my husband's first and middle name put together. And they let me keep Jordan. And um, of course, his last name is Stevens. And so um, those are the two men that um, that put up with me <laughs> day in and day out. Um, 
the best part of me is being a mother and um, just being able to to have a senior. Can you believe it? I mean, he is a senior <laughs> this year and he's doing his thing, you know, and we're just yeah. so proud of him. And uh, my husband and I will, will be married 20 years this year. Awesome. So we'll celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary in July. And so um, they are just two of my biggest supporters. And um, here, I just wanted to to kind of show you why they are so special to me. This picture is actually um, the day I was named CFO in Aldean ISD back in 2016. And so uh, my son it was was the shortest person in the house, you know, at that time. And he reminds yeah, yeah. us often that he is now the tallest, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, person in the house. But yes, they are. Those are my loves. Um, I I couldn't do this work, th this job, you know, without their support. And um, I just I just love loving on them, and I love the way they love on me. Yes, and I know you've mentioned how much your husband. Like you, you, you talked about your husband uh -huh. and you talked about his level of support mm -hmm. and how you would not be able to pretty much make the moves that you're making without his level of support. Let's talk about how important his support is for you. Yeah. Um, you know what? I got to take a step back and give some credit to my dad here or well, both of my parents, but you know, my dad instilled in me the importance of self-respect, right? And 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 having a man that loves you and respects you and that's going to take good care of you was, you know, those kind of conversations. And, you know, they can't just blow the horn when they pull up, right? They got to come knock on that door. And so uh, needless to say, I have been blessed to have um, a, a husband like my husband, Anthony, and, you know, when I say, he, girl, he puts up with me, <laughs> it takes a special kind, you know, and um, he has the right temperament. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it takes a, my dad tells me all the time, you know, oh, I don't know who going to put up with you, who going to deal with you, you know, that would be a joke around the house. And, yeah. and I got lucky. And so um, my husband is also from, he's originally from Michigan, actually, but um, our families were friends you know, growing up. And so um, I got an, a chance to really see him up close and personal with his daughters and, and, and fell in love with the way he loved on them, right? right? A man that was just like caring and loving with his daughters, you know, that did something for my heart. And so um, being a working mom, you know, being an ambitious woman, you know, just having these goals and dreams and knowing that you have someone in your corner that pushes you right. and encourages you and then they get it right and I don't always get it right and um but he he gets me and I'm just so grateful that I have a spouse that um lets me um make tough decisions <laughs> but I still have to let him be the man you know let him lead our house even with my strong will and my my stubbornness yeah um, he he allows me to be Tamika, you know, and he knows me as Mika, you know, he knows me with no doctor in front of my name, right? Yes. Yes. And so um, it's just, it's really a blessing. I can't just stop thinking about how much he means to me and our family and, and how much I adore him. Yes, yes. And, and when we were talking about it, I felt that. Yeah, I, it. I felt that. And I think it's so important because a lot of times we hear about like how a woman supports a man and you mm -hmm. know helps them kind of get to the next level, but rarely do we give men their credit when they are the supporters, you know, mm -hmm. in so many different ways. So I definitely wanted to take a moment to make sure that we did that. And I know your son is the absolute <laughs> apple of your eye. And I know you're so proud of him and I think in this picture, although he wasn't necessarily really taller than you, but he was standing on something. So I'm pretty yeah. sure now he is actually taller than Girl, you. Girl, so. he is. He is. Um, that, you know, he is, I, I just, girl, I just get so sensitive mm -hmm. when I think about um, raising uh, a young man, a young Black man, you know, especially in times like these, you yes. know, it's just so important for 
you know, us to impart so much knowledge and preparation on him for, for this world, for this life, right? And so um, I am just trying to be the best mother. I can be uh, the best exemplar. You know, you don't have to look far, son. You know, you got some parents who are right here yeah. encouraging him and, and, and trying to teach him how to love himself and but most importantly love god and love others and which is how you know we grew up you know right. having that level of care for other people and and letting him know that the sky's the limit you know and he can control and define his own destiny and we, we make choices in life right. and we have to of course live with those choices so that's me at graduation uh, from sam houston and um it was one of again one of the proudest moments um, a, a sense of accomplishment, but wanting him to see in me, you know, I'm a first generation college student. And so the possibilities, my parents set the tone for the, and the expectation that, you know, whatever you want to be to me, could you have to define that, you know, and then you have to do the work. And so I, I live by that. And I'm always trying to model and show him that, you know, your dad and I, we're going to, we're going to, do our best to pour into you. And it takes a village, right? Right. You know, he has a, a we have a strong support system, but um, I want to lead the way as his mother to show him, hey, I, I, if no one else has your back, I got it, you know? Right. And so, um, and I think he's he's learning that. He's, he's eight, he's going to be 18 in a few months. And so he'll be going off to college and, oh, it's just so many emotions around that. But he is not that little baby anymore right there. He no. is. He's a big boy. Yep. He's and, a young man. <laughs> yeah, and he's a big boy about to take an amazing adventure at an amazing university. So let's talk about his <laughs> Bryce University admission. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm so, oh, we are so overjoyed with, um, a, we call him AJ, with AJ and, you know, what he has accomplished. He he will be uh, graduating at the top of his class, you know, so we have really pushed for him to have choices, right? You, you want to go the academic route, athletic route, you can control all of that, but you got to do the work, right? And so um, this amazing opportunity that is before him to attend the Rice University, right? Um, it's just, you know, we don't take it for granted, this opportunity that he has before him. And this is actually signing day. And so uh, being a mom that works in Dallas, but my family literally is still in, in Houston. And um, his senior year when I, and I know we're going to probably talk about more of my journey mm -hmm. to Dallas ISD, but when I decided to take this opportunity um, the one thing he asked me was, mom, please don't make me move my senior year. And I said, I would never do that. We would never do that. And so when me and my husband sat out and talked about, you know, this amazing opportunity to, to be a part of this Dallas ISD team, right? Um, we had that hard conversation, you know, I'm not going to be here day in and day out, you know, but the expectation that you go to school, you do well, and you work hard is still there. And um, we, you know, FaceTime, you know, we have all these different mechanisms to communicate, mm -hmm. but it's nothing like being, you know, a part of your child's life on an intimate level. So um, seeing him on this day just brought me again so much joy because he has, he has withstood this, this challenge, yeah. right? With mom being away. You know, and my husband would kill me if he knew I was about to tell you that he doesn't cook. <laughs> so I don't cook much either, but I cook more than him. And so, you know, leaving my two guys and, you know, and, and coming to Dallas has been, I'm still going through that transition, but he has um, risen to the occasion. He has, he has done everything we've asked him to do and some things we didn't ask him to do because he can be a, a little turkey at times, but for the most part, um, he he has he has done well, and so we are just we were so proud that day. I'll never forget it, you know. And I'm extra. The pictures everywhere, the treats, you know, as everything was big because that's right. it's celebrating my only child, right? right. And right. and trying to set him on a pathway 
of success and letting him understand or showing him how proud of him uh, we truly are. Well, he definitely had some great examples. <laughs> sure. Thank and you. I want to talk a little bit about being an executive. Okay. And making those very, very tough decisions as a mom. Yeah. And and having that support system, but still having to be able to make those tough decisions where you can't be there all the time. Right, right. Let's talk a little bit about that. Let's explore that. Yeah, so, oh, I mean, again, that's, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. It can get really heavy um, when I think about um, just being this aspiring, you know, young lady and being a mother, right? Mm -hmm. My commitment and my first thought is, is my family, right? right? And so what I've learned on this journey is, you know, the power of communication, you know, when my husband and I talk or when I'm talking to my mom about things that I want to do or I want to pursue, you know, it's, well, have you talked to Anthony, you know, or have you prayed about it? You know, and, and what else? Tell me why you want to do these things. Those are the questions, you know, I I ask myself. And then, um, like I said, going back to, you know, really making certain that um, I'm making the right decision and the best decision in the best way professionally. Right. But I just feel like I have so much to give to, to children, to students. Uh, I mean, I'm a teacher at heart. Um, I started off as a third grade teacher. And, you know, it's because of two teachers that I had, two of all the teachers I've had, you think about being throughout your educational career, right? right? And right. all the people that you get exposed to teachers, mm -hmm. it's two teachers that left this lasting impression on me. And it, it has driven me to want to, you know, create and be a part of a system that if I can create another Loretta Speed and another Barbara Clark. I mean, if I can be that to mm -hmm. other students or other children, oh my God, goodness, how much better this world would be. And so that's been not my one of my motivators, those two individuals, those two women. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they realized that they made those lasting impressions um, on my life. Right. Um, third grade teacher, Ms. Clark, and my history teacher from summer school. I went to summer school to get ahead in high school. And I met Miss Speed and, and again, they just opened me up to all of these different experiences that I had not had been a part of. And so that started me on this pathway to thinking about, wow, what can I do to be unique? You know, what can I do to set myself apart? Right. And as an executive, sometimes, especially a woman of color in a role such as this, um, there's not a lot of diversity you know, and, and so um, I've had to learn <laughs> how to pour into myself and let other people pour into me to help me get some of the confidence um, that I didn't always have and still fall short in that area many times. I mean, doing this is, you don't know how hard this is. I'm sweating, Stephanie, like I get nervous, you know, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to mess up, but I am who I am, right? Right, and right. So, you know, you, you have words are powerful and yes, you have are. to know what you're saying and people are listening and they trust you. And, and when you earn trust, keeping mm -hmm. that trust is so important. So as a, an executive, right, I'm being trusted to provide good information and to help make good decisions. And so um, that those decisions impact the lives of so many people. Yes. And so I don't take this work for granted. Right. And and it's so important to get it right in the best way that I can. Yes, absolutely. And I know we we kind of dealt with your session a little bit different because normally we start at the very beginning, right? Almost <laughs> from, hey, where were you born? Let's let's get this one. But but that's why I said with you, you made it clear to me that before you said anything, you <laughs> wanted to talk about your core family your mm -hmm. son and your husband. And I hope they realize and understand how much you, they mean to you. And so we definitely, I definitely wanted to highlight them and make sure that we, that I honored that for you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. So with that being said, we're going to go back a little bit. We're going okay. to <laughs> kind of 
we're going to kind of go to where it all started for Tamika and we're okay. talk about your parents. Sure. We're going to get started with your parents and let's talk a little bit about your parents and about uh-huh. <laughs> how it started. So these are your parents. Yes. <laughs> are you that- a teacher? Say it again. Are you a Texan? I am not a Texan. I'm a transplant to okay. Texas. Okay. Um, I'm originally from Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, born and raised. Uh, my parents actually still live in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to college at Dillard University. And um, from there, I moved to Houston. And I spent the last 21 years uh, in Houston. So most of my adult life, since college has been in Houston, but by far, um, these two individuals, oh my goodness, I mean, they are um, the epitome, Stephanie, of love, you know, and um, while we didn't have a whole lot financially, we had what we needed, Mm -hmm. Um, we were rich in so many ways, and you know, in culture and tradition and family. And it's from the two of these individuals, my parents, that I learned the importance of sacrifice and and service, right? And and to learning how to help others along the way, right? Um, A big family, uh, my dad has uh, brothers and sisters, my mom's brothers and sisters. So it was always this village, you know, aunts and cousins and, you know, playing cards and dominoes and barbecues and fish fries and going to the lake and, you know, going on a family cruise. I mean, all of these different experiences, um, my parents set the tone for our family and they set the expectations. And so I'm just so appreciative of um, the way they raised us, Mm -hmm. the way they raised me, my brother, my sister, my cousins to love on each other you know, to take care of one another, because um, at the end of the the day, your family is your family, right? Right. And so we don't always like each other, (laughs) but we definitely, um, you know, love each other. And I'm just, you know, my mom is, I call her my shero. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you she is the epitome of resilience, right? She is the most courageous woman um, that I know. And I didn't understand some of her decision-making as a child. Right. And it wasn't until, you know, I became a wife and and had my own child that I really began to understand her decision-making and her level of sacrifice because um, not every child has that, that advocate, not every child has that person or not every girl has that mother or father, if I can say it that way, who truly wants the best for them. And they put themselves last. When I say my mom puts herself last and, um, you know, I'll I'll share this last little piece about her. When I had my son, Mm -hmm. um, I was recovering after um, delivery and she stayed with me the first couple of weeks and um, the recovery was, I was struggling a little bit and um, my son literally slept on her chest for the first five to six days of his life. And so they have bonded in a way that I will never understand. And I have to sometimes say, okay, your grandma, a mom, you know, the same thing I have to tell my sister sometimes. I'm like, I have to remind them if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have, you know, a nephew, uh, you wouldn't have an AJ, you know? Right. So, you know, that's like our little joke, but mm-hmm. it was just when I think about my mom and all that she has been through, I'm just reminded of the importance of um, making certain AJs always first in my decisions and my husband and I, that's our commitment to one another. So when when we don't always like each other, the focus is on AJ yes. because we got to get it right for AJ and uh, we'll deal with the rest later, right? And so I'm just glad that I have parents that 
they show up, <laughs> they're going, they're active, they're present. And my mom ain't going to miss nothing. When I say signing day, basketball, whatever it may be, um, she's there. She's retired now. She's earned her rights. Both of my parents are retired. Mm -hmm. And so um, they can move around a little differently. You know, I, I, when I grow up, I want to be like them. I want to be retired and, you know, able to move around when I want to move around. So I'm just thankful that I have um, the parents that I had and they exposed me to family and the importance of family first. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Yes. And you mentioned your siblings. Yes. Now, where, where do you fall in line? <laughs> Are the oldest, the middle, or the baby? So I'm in the middle. Okay. So I'm that child that they overcorrected on. So <laughs> I have my brother, Derek. He lives here in Dallas. That's who I live with. So I live with my brother and my niece, Alyssa, and my sister-in-law, Lisa. Thank, I just They took me in. And I'm just so thankful. I was like, I just need to stay a few months. And then it's like a few months. I'm like, I don't want to live by myself. And, you know, they're like, you're fine. You're fine. You know, so I just so appreciate them for allowing me to, to come into their home. So my brother's the oldest mm -hmm. and um, he turned 50 last year. So we celebrated him last year. And then I'm second. I'm in the middle. And then my baby sister, Shamel, her, her real name is Thelma. That's her first name. That's my grandmother's name. But she goes by her uh, middle name, which is Shamel, named after my dad, whose name is Melvin. I don't even think I said my parents' name. Melvin and Lena, those are my, uh, those are my parents. And so I'm the middle child. And so my brother was... I call him, he was the bad one. He got away with everything. He was first, you know, he the kid. I love the, the air quotes, by the you way. Know, with the silver caps in his mouth. He was, yeah. you know, he was that dude, right? Yeah. And then, you know, I come along and I can't have no candy after five o'clock. I can't do this. I can't do that, you know, and and then they have another baby. I'm like, why are y'all having another baby when I'm at third grade? And so here comes my sister who gets everything, right? Cause she has two older siblings that are taking care of her. And then, you know, mom and dad are tired or whatever they say they are, you know, and so she's the baby. So she gets everything. So yeah, it's and when we get together, it is, it is always a barrel of laughs. Let me tell you, I, I don't think one city can handle the three of us living in the same city. That's our little joke, but um, we are close in a special way. And I'm just, so thankful that I have siblings that that love on me and you know and they check me too they tell me when I'm not right or they tell me when I'm absent you know because I can't be all places and I've missed some things along the way and you know and and they've had those conversations with me and you know and I've had to recenter you know some things and I, I know we're going to talk more about life but you know COVID let me really take a hard look at you know, where, I, who I am, the person that I want to be and what, I, what I'm not doing to my, to the best that I can do. Right. And it, it allowed me to reset in a different way. So yes, those are my, those are my siblings and uh, my parents. Yeah. And I think you brought about something that I think shifted a bunch of us in a bunch of different, in a lot of different ways when it, when COVID happened, right. Mm -hmm. it, it made people put things into perspective and it made us look at life a little bit differently and you know so I definitely agree with you on that and I also want to talk about your experience with HBCUs <laughs> you, you you had the pleasure of attending two of them but one of them kind of still has your heart let's talk wow. about that <laughs> so when I graduated from um I went to Bird High School in Shreveport, Louisiana, and then I went to Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana. And, you know, when I tell you that I had never seen that level of, I'm going to, Black excellence, that's just what I'm going to, that's just what it was. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I mean, everybody, all the professors or 99% of the professors, right? I mean, it was just black people, smart people, all, all different walks of life, all different types of cultural experiences. I mean, my roommate from my freshman year was from Chicago, right? Then I had another close friend that was from um, Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And so I met so many different people. 
and experiences, the intimate class settings. Like I got to know my professors. They knew me on a first name basis. That's how close and intimate it was. And so that was by far one of the best decisions I had ever made in my life um, going to do at university and what made it even more special. So I have a cousin and he and I are the same age. We are a few months apart. And so we went to high school. We're, we're like best cousins, right? right? So we went to high school together and um, we went to Dillard together. And so, which really solidified our relationship even more so, you know, growing up, living, you know, in walking distance practically from one another, and then going to high school and college together um, just created so many different experiences for us to have as a, as a family. But um, by far, Dillard just changed the game on my life. It helped me try to get some perspective, you know, and when I was younger, you know, it was, uh, I was too tall. I was too dark. I was too skinny. You know, I had all this self-doubt about Tamika. Mm -hmm. And um, at Dillard, I learned how to come into my own and to, you know, embrace these long legs that God blessed me with. <laughs> and there were other girls that were taller than me, you know, and so I used to be in the tallest person some, most times. And so um, the, the professors just really poured into us and help us, you know, stay on track with our academics and help mold and shape us as young people. And it wasn't just the professors. I mean, I had a work study job and um, I will never forget Miss Helen. She was the division's secretary, the division of business. And again, she didn't know me from a man on the moon. You know, she just loved on me, took care of me. I, I would go to her house. You know, I could leave my stuff at her house over the summers. When I tell you, just being a part of that, that experience and seeing all this greatness and meeting so many great people and developing some of the best friendships that have carried me through to today um, has meant so much to me. And after Dillard, moved to Houston. Shortly after that, got my teaching certification about a year later because I graduated from Dillard with a business degree, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, I had this idea in my head that when I graduated, I was going to be working at this big Fortune 500. I was going to have my bag. I was going to be in Paris. You know, <laughs> I was going to be rich, you know, right. <laughs> with all these things. And um, needless to say, um, there was a different pathway for me. Uh, I worked in industry for about a year. And I remember calling my mom saying, I can't, I don't like this. I don't, I don't want to do this like this. And she said, you have to do, you know, you have to go have a job where you love getting up to do it, Tamika. And I didn't understand it at the time, because for me, everything was about economics. You know, right. I, I want to be able to make some money and take care of my family, make some money. And I was thinking, teachers don't make no money, not the kind of money, you know, I want right. to make. Right. And so needless to say, a year it wasn't even out of college a year. I had I went back and got my teaching certification because that's where my heart was. You talk about playing teacher as a school as a as a child. Mm -hmm. That was me. I wasn't a student. I was always the teacher, right? With my cousins, with my friends. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm bringing the books. I'm bringing the pencils when we go on vacation. We're gonna play school. We're gonna we're gonna do some of that type of stuff. So once I um Moved to Houston, I had an interview. And when I tell you that that principal, he took a chance on me and um, I am so thankful for him. Um, I got into an emergency certification program, got my certification in a, in a year and I was teaching third grade. When I tell you the best job, the best experience, the kids, I mean, I wish I could just go back, right? When things were just that simple. Right. And um, shaping the minds of young people and loving on them the way you could love on them, at, you know, back then. And uh, it just it still just drives me. I, I mean, that that's what brings me joy, just being able to to see kids at their best and wanting to make sure kids have their best. And Dillard taught me that we should want the best for everybody, you know, and this is how you get on a pathway to do that. So um, shortly after going to working at um and as a third grade teacher I went back and got my master's in education administration from Prairie View so that's I went there and of course it was a 
uh, more of an alumni, not an alumni experience, but a graduate experience, right? So I wasn't on the yard like I was at Dillard, <laughs> but when I tell you beautiful campus, I mean, it, the facilities are, are just amazing and a great experience. It was a great program there. Uh, got my master's of education administration there because I'm thinking, okay, oh my goodness, I'm going to be you know, an administrator, I'm going to be making certain I hire the best teachers, you know, for our students, you know, I had all these hopes and dreams in that way. And um, shortly after that, um, I ended up getting an MBA, and then later getting my doctorate degree from Sam Houston State University. And, and of course, there's some stories along the way there, but definitely Dillard has um, changed the trajectory of my life. And it, it had not been for those experiences. I don't know if I would have gained some of the, the confidence um, that I, I'm still working to have in the way that Dillard helped me to become more of a young woman. Now, I'm actually kind of curious, since you went to two HBCUs, uh -huh. what do you think your experience at Prairie View would have been had you not gone to Dillard? Uh, that's a really a, a insightful question to ask. You know, now if I ask my friends that went to PV, they tell me that I would I would have been I would have fit right in with the vibe, right? And so, uh, but I'm you know I'm a I'm I am a blue devil, and I'm gonna ride blue devil. <laughs> and so there is no other experience that I would ever want to be a part of but the Dillard experience. Okay, and so, um, that's what Dillard was for me. You right. know, and so. You know, when you're with your friend groups, I got friends that went to Southern, Gramlin. I mean, my parents were Gramlin season ticket holders going okay. to the Gramlin games. And right. my baby not going to Gramlin. I was like, no, Dillard is for me. I'm going to DU. And so I don't know what my experience would have been like, but I will tell you both campuses are rich in culture. You know, they're rich in tradition. And I imagine that it would have been, you know, at just as great as it was at Dillard. But, you know. Dillard is my is my heart. So how did Dillard capture you? So I mean, because it's almost like they just say, oh, whoop, we got you. <laughs> so so what did what was so special about Dillard? Like why did how did you even end up there? So when I was in high school, you know, there is so much power in counseling. Let me just say that. And if I'm just honest in this moment, I wish I had had guidance counselors to say, oh my God, Tamika, you can go here, you can go there, you know, to count me in and not count me out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was at, at a magnet school yeah. um, competing with, you know, other kids, smart kids, I'm going to say smart, you know, and um, needless to say, my mother had to come to the school and say, no, no, we need to see some college applications. She's going to college. And I'm thinking, well, isn't that what the counselor is supposed to do? Encourage, motivate, support, you know, to make certain that the students are going to, to college. And so there was a college night um, in Treeport one evening, and um, I got an opportunity to meet um, someone that um, spoke about Dillard. And then my cousin James started talking about Dillard. And so that's how my interest for Dillard started. And so um, long story short, um, my parents were dropping me off in August, and I haven't been back home since. So um, <laughs> that's that's the short version of right. you know, the pathway well, I, to Diller. So I guess those yeah. college nights really do work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my parents were were serious. My mom was. She she expected people to pour into me and to make certain that I knew that there were opportunities for me. And Miss Speed, the, the teacher that I spoke about earlier, um, she was instrumental in, in telling me about these different institutions or, or universities as well, such as Dillard. So um, if it had not been for those two individuals or, or those, those two opportunities, I don't know where I would have landed, you know, my cousin and then Miss Speed and, and that event, there was a college night and you know, my parents didn't go to college, so they didn't know. They just knew that they wanted their kids to have, to not let financial reasons be the reason why I couldn't go to college. So they did whatever, we did whatever we needed to do to make certain that um, I was able to go to school. Yeah. It's amazing how, you know, teachers can have such a huge impact on the lives of people throughout their entire life, even as an adult. 
In fact, I was watching an interview with uh, Miss Bronson. Uh, she's the creator of Abbott Elementary. I'm not sure if you yes. watched that show. Yes. So she was talking about how the name Abbott Elementary, the name Abbott came from a teacher that she had as a child who had such an impact on her. She named her show Abbott. Wow. Mm-hmm. She also said that her mother was a, a teacher and that's who uh, one of the characters is based off of. But when I, and and then it's like, man, this teacher had such an impact on you that this hit show that you have was named after her so kudos to all the teachers out there who yeah. are teaching the young people and having such a positive impact on their lives to where you know when they become an adult and they look <laughs> back on their lives they're able to say this person this teacher touched my life in a way that I'll never forget and without Absolutely. their guidance and support and love you know my life may have had a different path so sure. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the teachers out there, including you. Thank, thank you so you. much for being a teacher. And I know that you spoke. Um, I mean, you were almost borderline emotional when you were talking <laughs> about being a teacher and mm-hmm. how out of all the jobs that you've had, being a teacher is by far your favorite position Absolutely. to have. Absolutely. Yes. So yes. I mean, that in itself is is very, very powerful. And so you also talked about, in addition to the teachers and the people in your life that had such a huge impact on your life and made such a huge difference, you also mentioned three books that oh. are <laughs> life-changing. So mm-hmm. let's talk about your life-changing books. Yes. Oh my goodness. So- I just want to take a step back and COVID, right? So I've always been an avid reader. Um, It's one of my favorite pastimes. And um, most times I'm reading for to get information, Mm -hmm. right? And so um, these are three books where I not only got information, I was reading for pleasure, right? I was just reading. And um, the first one I want to talk about is Lean In. friend recommended lean in to me um, at a point in my life when I was just trying to figure out balance, right? I was trying to figure out, I, I think I was having some mom guilt, you know, that's a real thing if, if, if we don't realize that or not, but what is real for me where I'm, I'm missing um, events or I'm missing um, games and I'm not able to be at everything um, like I want to be um, because I have obligations, I have work, I have places that I need to be. There are people that are depending on me um, to do the good work that I know needs to be done and we know that needs to be done. So during COVID, I um, this book was recommended to me. And when I tell you it was like an ouch, right? It forced me to take a hard look at who I was and who I wanted to be and to, you know, use this seat that I have at the table. You can't be afraid to use it, right? And and to to speak up and speak out and, and to push yourself. And, but with that comes sacrifice, with that comes making certain that you have the right support systems in place. And so, um, during COVID, March 2020, never forget it. My son was actually in Louisiana with my mom for his spring break. So of course, me and my, my husband are, and I are home together. And then, you know, the outbreak or the pandemic starts or what have you. And he's stuck in Louisiana for like five months. And work got hard harder. The days got longer, right? Because we're all trying to figure it out. We have students, we're trying to get devices in hand. You know, we're just trying to do all of these different things. And what I learned in that moment was that I was giving so much and coming home with nothing left in my tank. Like what I was leaving for my husband and for my son was a little bit of nothing. And so it allowed me to pause lean in in a different way and really reimagine who I wanted to be as a as a working mom. And then um, 
I have this is like core group of friends. I have have lots of close friends, but my core four, we call ourselves the DU Day Ones. And my cousin James is a part of that, our core group, my best friend Keisha and my best friend Jerry and, and little Charles. We were all on a Zoom call and we were talking about, you know, we hadn't seen each other and, you know, and James is the historian, right? And I was like, hey, we need a book to read. We need to do a book study together. So he told us we needed to read The Warmth of Other Sons. And so uh, we were like, James, how long is the book? Because, okay, James is the historian, right? So we know how that goes. So needless to say, um, when I read The Warmth of Other Sons, I I was angry with myself, first of all, because I'm like, why am I just now reading anything written by Isabel Wilkerson? Like I read, I, mean, I had to just go back and just do it all over again. And this story, the, the power of this story, this storytelling, again, made me take a hard look at, wait, you went to an HBCU. You went to the Dillard University. How have you not read The Warmth of Other Sons, Tamika? And so um, that book really just exposed so much uh, to these systems that are in place and how you know, people had to leave their families and go, you know, north, west, and everywhere else for a better life to save their lives in many instances. So listen, re reading that kind of opened my mind in a different way. And I am an avid Brene Brown fan, right? And so uh, Dare to Lead, again, put me in this zone where I had to learn how to, I'm still trying to build that confidence muscle, right? And um, learning how to have these, you know, being comfortable with being uncomfortable and having these courageous conversations that are so necessary, but just make people uncomfortable. And so um, if I had to recommend any three books to anyone, um, these are the three um, that definitely um, come to mind and have continued to have a lasting impact on who I am as a as a woman, as a mother, as a professional, you know, mm -hmm. as, as a sister, as a friend, as a leader, you know, when I think about all of the many different roles that I have to play, depending on what time of day it is, mm -hmm. these have been perhaps the most life-changing. Okay. And so out of the three, if mm -hmm. you could only pick one, Ooh. only one, if you, if, you, <laughs> if somebody said, Mika, I just need one book, just one that's just going to just going to make an impact on my life, which one would it be? Oh, Stephanie, that is so hard because it depends on where you are on your journey, right? I'm this, I need clarification. I'd have to ask, you know, a few additional need questions a part two. <laughs> to, to be able to tell you, hey, you, you need to, you know, you need some lean in in your life, you know, or no, you need to go back to your roots. You need some warmth of other sons. You need to really hear this Isabel Wilkerson stuff, you know, mm -hmm. or you need to, you need to really ground yourself and learn how to, you know, speak up and be courageous. Okay. You got to dare to lead. So it just depends on the situation. I'm a very situational person, situational leader. Anybody will tell you that about me. So I don't have a canned response for things. I have to get some details. Yeah. That way I can give you the best information possible. So I can't just pick one just I based on what you said. <laughs> okay, we, we gotta we gotta do a scenario to get one. Okay, so what would you say? Which book would you pick for a woman who is a leader mm -hmm. who is struggling to transition into a new role that she has. Okay. Or, or perhaps even a new role that she wants to be in. Okay. Okay. Lean in. Okay. Lean in. It's, it's, it's really, it is, you're going to have to own it. You're going to have to get that work-life balance in there and it's okay to be a mom and to be ambitious you know, men do it all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I can say that, you know, yeah. Yeah. so don't tell your story and don't be afraid to, to really be who you are and, and, and then put some parameters and some boundaries in place. Right. Mm -hmm. We talk, about this, I'm not missing X, Y, and Z, you know, those are my non-negotiables. Right. And so 
Um, lean in, I think it's a good place when we, when you really need to reimagine investing in yourself, you know, and, and coming into your own in the workplace. Um, I think that's a good read. Okay. Well, great. Well, we have covered so much, <laughs> you know, you've touched on a lot of different things, you know, and, and actually you touched on a little bit of colorism. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't really get into that, but I think that's something that affects the black community. Deeply. Sure. Mm -hmm. But it seems like your tour at Diller kind of helped with that. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. when you see other people who look like you, it makes more sense to you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you have more people around you who look like you, mm -hmm. then you know, it's it's when you're kind of isolated or when you're different than everybody that mm -hmm. makes it easier to kind of be a target of that. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being transparent. Thank Thanks. you so much for sharing your story. <laughs> and I want to just give you the opportunity to kind of add whatever you want to add, whatever your whatever your heart says that you want to add go ahead. I want to, I want to give you that opportunity to go ahead and add and have any last words before we close it out. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, again, um, thank you so much for um, creating space for us to have this, this conversation. Um, being new to, to Dallas ISD, I'm still learning uh, the people, the process is the city, right? And so in managing myself, you know, through this transition. And so um, people are, are important to me. And so as I work to build, you know, relationships and um, get to know others, um, I'm glad that I had this venue or this, this moment to share a little bit more about me, who I am as a person. And, you know, I, I, I get that my title says, you know, Dr. Tamika Alfred Stevens, Chief Financial Officer, and and um, but I'm still a regular person. I mean, I like to have fun. I like to laugh. You know, I love going to sporting events. You know, I I just like to enjoy life because it is such a precious part of who we are, and it can change so 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 swiftly. And so, um, again, I'm just thankful for my family, um, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, you know, it's, it feels good to have people that, um, that are really for you and, and that lift you up. But, um, I think it's important that, um, uh, I give back and to, you know, I, I've been taught to lift as you rise and, and not, forget that there are people that are in different places and spaces along their journey. And I will tell you that my story is, is still being written. And two years ago, I could have never sat here and talked to you in this way. Um, I have been private in so many ways. And so, you know, I had a friend to push me and say, you gotta, you gotta speak up. You know, you can't be uh, afraid to talk about who you are and to tell people about Tamika and your pathway. You never know um, how that may inspire someone else along the way. So um, again, thank you um, to our, our MWBE program. Thank you for having a, a program um, such as that because not every you know school district has uh, that program or not every system acknowledges the fact that um, those programs are necessary and, and they do help small business owners, women and small business owners. So uh, again, um, thank you, Stephanie, for, for creating this space. You know, I, I keep repeating myself, you know, uh, for me to be able to gain more confidence to live in my truth and to just, just to laugh and talk and just be Tamika, you know, yeah. and, um, I don't always get a chance to do that. Um, but I'm glad that I am a part of the Dr. Elizalde's team. She is fierce. She is amazing. <laughs> and I'm just thankful that I have this opportunity to learn from a leader such as herself. And there are so many others, but I'm just grateful to be a part of the team. 
and um, to be in this moment because um, I do not take it for granted, um, the opportunities that I have been blessed with. And um, and I own, I seize the day, carpe diem, right? You got to seize the day, seize the yeah. moment and not let it pass you up mm -hmm. and um, and just not be afraid. That's what I would say to people that are right there on the edge, not knowing what to do. And, you know, that breakthrough is coming. So stay, stay grounded in your face, stay true to yourself and, um, and keep kids first. And, and that's just what I live by. And um, it's gotten me this far. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Again, <clears throat> what I started with in the beginning, I so meant it. Like I knew it was going to be an amazing session because you called me, you picked up the phone. I mean, I sent you an email and said, Hey, I want to invite you to do this. And you said, you know what? I'm getting ready to call her. <laughs> we get ready to talk about this and we're getting ready to do this. I so did. I definitely want to say to you, I appreciate you um, because yes, you are the CFO of the second largest school district. Okay, let's just acknowledge <laughs> that. Okay. We have a woman of color. We do. As a CFO of the second largest school district in the state of Texas. So let's acknowledge that. Thank and you. Let's just say we're so proud of you, first and foremost. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk with you, to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much for being transparent. Thank, thank you. you so much for being real. Because <laughs> You know, a lot of times, you know, you could have saw that and said, eh, I don't have time because I know how busy you are. You could sure. say, you know, I don't have time. I got so much to do. I'm still trying to do this and do that. But you didn't. You embraced it. And you you were quite frankly happy about it. Like I was surprised. And I said, <laughs> so that, you know, so I was like, you know, we're going to do this. And so I just want to acknowledge that. And, and again, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for sharing your story and being transparent and the love and the support that you have from your family. It shows, you thank know, you. all the pushes and nudges that you've received, the books, whatever helped you along the way, it shows. And I wish you continued success. And I know that, you know, you are doing well here. You're going to continue to do well here. And I just want to thank you again so much for your time today. And I want to thank all of you who tuned in to listen to us, watch us today. I want to thank you guys so much for joining us and to continuing watching the Black History Month Facebook Live series. And so I, you know, sit tight. Don't, don't go anywhere, <laughs> Dr. Um, but I definitely want to make sure that you guys continue to stay tuned. We are going to have another amazing session tomorrow. This same time around 3.30 tomorrow, we're going to be featuring some of the Dallas ISD's MWBE team members. So make sure you stay tuned and stay with us on our Facebook page. So make sure you turn, tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow is actually going to be our very last session Tomorrow at 3.30 will be our last session. If you missed any of the sessions that we've had before, please don't hesitate to go on our Facebook page and view those videos. And we will also be uploading all of our videos from all of our amazing presenters on our YouTube page. So be sure to check that out. Again, I'm Stephanie Brosh, and I want to thank you guys so much for joining us with the Dallas ISD's MWBE Black History Month Facebook Live Series. Thank you so much and have a great day. Yeah.